Hey everybody, I'm Scott Allen Miller. Today on SamIT we're going to talk about what is nested RAID. RAID, of course, being the redundant array of inexpensive disks. Nested RAID is pretty simple, but it does take a little bit of explanation. But once we've had that explanation, it's pretty much self-explanatory and allows us to discover and explore different types of complex nested RAID levels without really needing any additional outside information other than understanding the underlying building blocks that are used. So first of all, nested RAID builds off of the existing RAID levels that we already have alone, that, that exist without being nested. And those building blocks would, of course, be RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, 7, and that's it. That's all we have in the industry to really work with. In theory, you could use RAID 2, 3, or 4 if you can find a controller that supports them. In reality, you wouldn't care. It's not something you would actually go out and try to do. And, of course, RAID 8 is theoretical, and we think maybe someday we will get to use it. But we don't have it today. As it stands, RAID 7 exists only in a single implementation as RAID Z3 on the ZFS software RAID implementation. So that one's extremely limited, but does exist. So the basics that we get to work with on a normal day-to-day -day basis are RAID 0, 1, 5, and 6, and nothing else. Just those four with that fifth that comes about in very special circumstances, but can be very useful. So, But we're not going to delve into it today. That's a separate discussion. Nested RAID uh, is built off of the fundamental concept that, just like partitions and volumes, RAID arrays present what we call a disk interface or a drive interface or a drive impression onto whatever's on top of it. Basically, our entire RAID array presents as a single disk once the operating system or whatever tries to attach to it. So any uh, higher level function, it doesn't matter what it is, sees the entire RAID array as a single block device, the same as a single disk would look. And because of this, we can treat any RAID array in any circumstance as if it was a disk. Well, of course, any disk can be put into RAID, so this, by extension, guarantees that we can take any RAID array and put it into another RAID array. We can do this indefinitely. Of course, doing this indefinitely would lead to lots of overhead from all kinds of RAID calculations, and eventually it would become very, very silly. But doing this twice actually works out really well in a lot of circumstances, and even in some cases, doing it thrice is just fine. Nobody does it more than that. It would really be silly, and even doing it thrice is getting pretty extreme. But there is one major RAID controller family, the LSI family, which also feeds into the Dell PERC controllers, that actually do uh, triple nested RAID standardly, but they hide this because I guess they're ashamed of it. Maybe we'll cover that in another video, exactly how you can identify that you have that weird scenario, because it comes up a lot, even though it shouldn't. But anyway, Nested RAID allows us to take one RAID layer or multiple different types and combine them into a single additional RAID layer. For example, the most common and the most useful that we would see here is taking a number of small RAID 1 arrays. Of course, those are generally a two-way mirror, just two disks. One is an exact mirror of the other in a small array by themselves. They cannot get larger than the capacity of a single drive, which today is about 12 terabytes, which is pretty big by, you know, traditional standards, but it's, the, it's just 12 terabytes. That's as big as a RAID 1 can be with current disks today. That will get larger over time, but only so much larger. By taking a number of these, whether it's two pairs or three pair or 20 pair, and combining them into a single RAID 0 array, so this is a single large RAID 0, who each individual member of it is actually a RAID 1 subsystem, we get what we call RAID 10. RAID 10, because of the way that this works, you can, you can look at the math of how do you calculate a RAID 0, you look at the math of the individual RAID 1s, so with the, you use the RAID 1s and determine the performance and the characteristics of that individual subsystem. You then present that information to the RAID 0 calculation as if it was a single drive with those characteristics. So the failure rate, the performance, the capacity, those numbers, you then present that to the RAID 0 and you use standard RAID 0 math to determine the overall array. Nothing weird happens here. Once you understand that you are abstracting any individual RAID array out and presenting it as a drive of its own performance and characteristics, everything just fits into the normal rules. You don't really need to know anything special about nested RAID 
other than how we say it. And the way that we say it is that the lowest level, the one closest to the hardware, is the number we give first. So in the case of a RAID 10, the RAID 1s are the things that touch the actual disk at the lowest level, and the, and the RAID 0 is the top level, the one that's going to be directly touching the file system. And so we say RAID 1, 0, or 10. You can also say one uh, RAID 1 plus 0, but the plus notation is weird. There's no need for it, and people get confused. They start thinking that RAID 10 and RAID 1 plus 0 are separate things, which of course they're not. There's no, there's no reason for plus notation because there are no RAID levels that have double digits, and we don't perceive any coming ever, really, at this point. Even getting uh, RAID 8 is a long shot, and we still have 9 to use if, if it's needed, and at some point they're going to start putting letters in there instead of numbers, because the numbers don't make any sense, because they're not numerical the way that they should be. Like, RAID 1 is not better than RAID 0, they're completely different things, and RAID 5 is in no way related to 1, it's not like a better version of it, they are completely different things, and RAID 5 is actually more like RAID 0, than it, you get it, it doesn't make sense, they're just numbers, we should have called them something else, and sometimes we do, RAID 4 and 5 are sometimes referred to RAID F, or sometimes 4, 5, 6, and 7 together are the RAID F family, and that gets confusing too, there's got to be better ways, this is what we have. Nested RAID uh, is really important because we generally want to get this combination of performance and scale and stuff that we can't get from individual RAID levels. For example, RAID 10 is actually pretty simple to use and to calculate. It's incredibly safe compared to its alternatives, such as RAID 6, that you would need to do to get the kinds of capacity that you would otherwise not be able to do if you were just using a RAID 1, for example. So we tend to use nested RAID actually as much as maybe 50% of the time of all systems that get deployed. So RAID, uh, RAID 10 is by far the most common, but we can do all kinds of different combinations depending on what factors matter to us and what blends we want to get. So RAID 60, for example, is RAID 6 arrays near the hardware with a RAID 0 stripe connecting them together, so very much like RAID 10. But we can also do uh, things like RAID 15, where we have RAID 1 arrays, and instead of using a RAID 0 to tie them together, we use a RAID 5. And again, we just do our math as usual, and we can figure out why that works the way it does, when it's beneficial, what its overhead is, and those kinds of things. Of course, you can do RAID 16 or RAID 61. Often when we're working with network RAID, we always have, uh, or almost always have nested in those situations because we want some kind of protection near the hardware and then some kind of protection on the network. Just because of kind of the way the factors work together, we almost always see nested RAID in that situation. When we do, you often have a different balance of needs due to overhead and, and performance and latency, those kinds of things. So while RAID 10 is super popular for local disks that have no network component, RAID 01 is very popular on a network. And what is RAID 01? We can step through it. The first piece is zero. So near the hardware, right on the disks, we have RAID 0 arrays. We don't know how big they are, uh, but a RAID 0 array of at least two disks and an unlimitedly large size if you want. And then on top of that, so we would have at least two of them, and then a RAID 1 on top that mirrors them together. That last piece is the piece we expect to happen over the network. So our individual machines in that case would be RAID 0s, and over the network we'd be do, doing RAID 1 mirroring so that two separate machines are in lockstep, but they each have RAID 0s locally. It's a very common approach, actually, for network RAID. Uh, it, it, when we're doing local, we don't use RAID 01, which we will tackle in a different video as to why RAID 10 is always superior when doing local. But in situations like this, RAID 01 is dramatically superior to RAID 10 uh, simply because of the network component. So things like that really do matter. And some types of RAID, like parity RAID 5, 6, and 7, while theoretically can be done on a network, are so fragile and slow and dangerous to do that way that we don't. You will never see true RAID, uh, true parity RAID of those styles ever on a network. It just, it doesn't work out. People have to go to other mechanisms, which we will discuss in a different video, to tackle that kind of problem. So I hope that that explains nested RAID. It's pretty simple once you understand that building block that each array presents itself as a disk and then disks can unlimitedly be added into new RAID arrays and each array actually 
acts individually, but from the highest level, when we actually go to consume that array, every array that's a part of it all gets presented as a single disk at the end of the day. And so we need to know that combined RAID level, whether that's 10 or 60 or 15 or whatever, in order for us to quickly understand what our capacity performance and reliability factors are going to be based on how those things are nested. It is worth noting that some nesting levels are self-explanatory. RAID 10, unless you're going beyond standard two-way mirroring, you just say RAID 10. You don't need to explain anything further. If you're doing something complex, like RAID 60s, and you have something like 48 disks or whatever, you can end up with like 20 different permutations of the sizes of the RAID 6s versus the number of members of the RAID 0 that could be organized in different ways, and so you're forced to explain the geometry in all cases, because a uh, a, a rate, two RAID 6s, each of 24 disks, is going to behave and have a very different safety and uh, capacity characteristics than having uh, 12 uh, RAID 6 members, each of four disks, right? Dramatically different performance and everything. Every factor will change. So in some cases, you have to explain the geometry. In some cases, it's, it's either just obvious or there's only one way to do it. And sometimes there's only one way to do it based on the number of disks. But one way or another, uh, when you get into nested RAID, you have to have a little bit more information, such as the number of disks and the geometry. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. Put your questions in the comments below. And as always, you can sponsor us on Patreon.